Okay, welcome back to FTL. We're doing a tutorial run through today with the basic ship, Kestrel, and we're about to move on to Sector 7. We have a choice between a hostile sector or a civilian sector here, but since it's the end of the game, the enemy ships are going to be pretty tough, so I'm going to stick to the civilian sector and keep things a little bit safer. We have a distress beacon up here, and here you can see the long-range scanners in action, really. Uh, we know that there is a hostile ship down here, so we could avoid that fight if we want to. And thanks to our improved sensors and our long-range scanners, we have two blue options for this event. Either one is as good as the other. Um, you can really go either way. We'll run another scan. We're given the opportunity to save either an Engi or a drone schematic, which is you know, another one of these drone pipes. Uh, I would like to get another drone schematic for free, but I feel like not saving the Engi would be kind of a dick move, so we're going to go ahead and save him instead. We don't need him, so I'm just going to dismiss him right away, but we did the right thing, and that feels pretty good. Let's jump back here and see what kind of fight we can get ourselves into. It's an automated ship. Now because we have cloaking, we could just bypass this fight and access the storage cache this ship is guarding without having to deal with the drone. But we're really well equipped for a fight, so there's no reason not to attack him and get some extra scrap out of it. This guy doesn't even have shields, he just has a cloaking unit, so it shouldn't be very difficult to take him out. I do want to cloak to dodge these lasers that he's about to fire. And now it's just a matter of waiting for my weapons to charge so I can take them out. This is going to be a pretty quick fight. It was an empty station, so it was a good thing that we ended up fighting that drone, because otherwise we wouldn't have gotten anything out of that encounter. As it is, we got some nice scrap. Here we're being offered more fuel for drone parts. We're doing quite well on both, so there's no reason to take that trade. And there's a store right here. It's good, we have some repairs that we need to make. He's got some decent weapons available. I do like the heavy ion, but nothing that I really want to trade out for our current armament. So instead, I'm just going to repair our ship and move on. I could buy more fuel, but I know that we're near the end of the game, so we don't actually need any more than we currently have. And here we get some scrap and a free system repair drone. I probably won't be using the system repair drone, since I have a full crew and one of them is an Engi. I'll be able to take care of any damage I take without having to waste power on running that. And there's another store right here. Has some more nice augments, but nothing I really need again. Uh, just to be safe, I am going to buy a couple more missiles, because we will need those for, at the very least, the last boss fight. Alright, this was that Zoltan research station event again, and this time it turns out that they're actually being held hostage by these pirates. But it's just two Engi, so they shouldn't be hard to deal with. They did send four people in as a boarding party, which is a little bit more of a problem. But here I think I'll be able to show off how good having fully upgraded doors are. Because what I can do is open all of these rooms to the vacuum, get my Zoltan out of the engine room so he won't take damage from losing air, and I can pretty much just let these guys suffocate. They may be able to break down that door, but they're going to be heavily injured by the time they do, so I'm not too worried about being able to take them in a fight. And even as they move from room to room, they'll still be taking damage from the lack of air, so... As you can see, 
these two guys just suffocated, and the other two got taken out by our crew. And we get a very nice reward for that. A couple different drone schematics, and some scrap. I'm going to shut all the doors on my ship so my crew don't start to suffocate. And now that there's air back in my teleporter room, I can bring my boarding party home as well. It generally seems to take about three to five seconds for rooms to refill with air if they've been exposed to the vacuum. Uh, so if you can't see inside a room of your ship for whatever reason, you can generally wait about five seconds and then somebody in and send somebody in and then they'll be safe. Once my slug guy gets healed up, we can move on. Here we have a... Uh, old cache that we could either booby trap to delay the rubble fleet or we can just secure the cache and see what's inside it instead. Um, I'm not too worried about delaying the fleet so I'm just gonna try and secure the cache and that was a good decision because we got some scrap and another defense drone. So now if we do a little bit of shuffling we have two defense drones and with a few ship upgrades we can now power both of them at once, so we will be very well defended from incoming missiles. There's a distress beacon up there, but we are running a little short on time, so instead I'm going to head towards the exit. We have a Mantis ship. They're going to send over some borders, but I'm not too worried about it. I have a defense drone that can deal with a missile launcher. And then my boarding party can deal with theirs. You can see they teleported back onto their ship when they got low on health, but one of them didn't quite make it. Now I could use my ion bomb to disable their med bay and then board them. But my boarding party is getting low on health, so I think instead I'm just going to destroy these guys the old-fashioned way. And you've seen this strategy several times before. Nothing has really changed. Except that now I can destroy them in one salvo, which is really satisfying. And oh my goodness! We got another burst laser too. That is like the best possible drop I could have gotten at this point. I mean, the scrap and everything is nice too, but oh man, another burst laser. All right, we definitely don't need all of this system repair drone crap. So I'm gonna do a little bit of weapon swapping here. All right, now we are almost literally as heavily armed as we possibly can be. We have two burst laser twos which means six shots between the two of them, and a halberd beam, and an ion bomb. Um, we are so well prepared for the final boss fight. Oh man. Uh, we also have a ton of scrap, so I think now is the time to finally fully upgrade my shields and max out my reactor. Now we have four levels of shielding. We have a ton of power. We can run everything. We are in really good shape. Here we have an Engi ship that <laughs> immediately tries to surrender to us, and we can either explain that we're friendly, be the good guys, or we can just kind of stay silent and be, and be like, sure, we'll accept your surrender. Um, we'll explain that we're friendly. Uh, they're relieved, they just leave. Sometimes if you explain that you're friendly, they'll actually give you a reward for being honest, but... Here we come across an encrypted signal being sent from a nearby planet. Let's check it out. And this would have given us a quest marker for a Federation base to go save, but since we're at the end of the game, we don't actually have time. So instead, we just get a decent reward. And let's move to the exit. More fuel for drone parts. Uh, I don't need either, again. So, with that, we are ready to move on to the final sector, the last stand. We 
get some free fuel, and they patch up your ship if you've taken any damage as well. This is why you don't have to worry about running low on fuel towards the end of the game. And here we see the final beacon map. Uh, this is different than all of the other sectors in the game in that almost all of the jump beacons are going to be hostile. Um, you'll usually be fighting rebel ships, uh, and we have these repair points on the map that'll give you some free supplies and repair your hull for free if you jump to them. And then up here in the corner you can see the rebel ship, which will slowly make its way towards the base. If it makes it to the base before you can intercept it, it's an instant game over, so you absolutely do not want to let that happen. It's happened to me a bunch, and it's really frustrating when it does. So instead, we're just going to start heading in its general direction. Here we come across the middle of a battle between the Federation fleet and the Rebels, and we get sucked into it. Now, I definitely don't want to board these guys, because as you can see, they have five crew members and an anti-personnel drone that will also engage any boarding parties in combat, and a medbay. Boarding these guys would be nigh on suicidal, so I'm just going to go ahead and destroy them. So we'll ion bomb their shields. As you can see, the Ion Bomb bypassed the Defense Drone. Defense Drones will not shoot down incoming bombs. And with their shields partially disabled, I can just open up on them with all of my other weapons. And you can see, with the Halberd Beam, if I do a little bit of creative targeting, I can catch five rooms. Uh, it still counts even if you just barely catch the inside edge of a room like this. So. With a little bit of care, you can really maximize the damage from your beam weapons. You can see almost all of my laser shots missed, but there was just so much coming in that it didn't end up mattering. And with six shots at once like that, oh, it's just beautiful. I love burst laser twos. We get some decent salvage, which I think I'm just going to roll into making a few last minute upgrades. I'm going to upgrade my engine room once, I'm going to upgrade my med bay once. And I'm going to upgrade my oxygen system and my piloting ones. Not because I want the bonuses that that provides, but because now they have an extra brick of power, so they can effectively take one more hit before they're completely disabled. And this will be really handy in the last fight. And of course, Murphy's Law, we spend all of our scrap, and there's a store right next door. This is why you should always check to see if there's a store you want to visit before you spend all of your scrap on upgrades. Fortunately, there's not really anything we need, so I can just go ahead and sell off all of the stuff I don't plan on using. And then roll that leftover scrap into a few more upgrades for the sake of durability, like I did with my piloting and my oxygen. For the time being, I'll fully power my engines, but when we get to the final boss fight, I'm going to need that reactor power for running my drones. Here we come across a repair station, and as you can see, you get some free supplies. They're handy, they can be a lifesaver. The only drawback is that, like the rest of the map, uh, the repair points are completely randomly placed. So sometimes they'll be somewhere where you can get to them and make use of them, and other times they'll be like off in a corner somewhere, and you'll never get there before you have to fight the rebel ship. It really is just up to chance. With that, we are within range of the rebel flagship. And that is a whole other can of worms, so I'm going to dedicate the entirety of the next and final video to dealing with that. So I will catch you guys then. Thanks for watching.